Hello everybody and welcome back to another SFML tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how to move a player around on the screen. The first thing that we need to know is how do we actually get keyboard input that makes it so we can actually hold down a button and it will constantly give us a sign that it's pressed down. What we can do is use the SF keyboard is key pressed function. Basically, what this will do is it will check whether a key is pressed. So it will not check what the time was between the previous press and the current press. It will only check whether the key is held down right now. And if that's true, then it will return true. So we actually held down a key. So let's create an if statement with the SF keyboard is key pressed. And then inside of it, we need to give it a key. The location of the keys in SFML is also in the keyboard. So we need and go to key. And this contains all of the different keys that you have in your keyboard. So if you go one step deeper, you will see that we have all of the different keys that we can possibly have on our keyboard. So let's say we want to simply move our player around using A, S, W, and D. So let's start with A. Then in here, we can actually move our player. So how do we move our player? Well, SFML made it easy for us. What we can do is we can type in player dot move, and that will move it actually. That will move it by whatever we specified. We can either pass in a vector to f to move our player, or we can pass it an x offset and a y offset. So how many pixels we will move on the x-axis and on the y-axis. I'm going to use the x and the y as floats right now, so not as vector to f, since that's less typing. So in order to move left, we need to go into the negative space. The screen in SFML works this way. This corner right here is always going to be 0, 0. This corner right here is always going to be 0 on the x-axis and the screen height on the y-axis. This corner right here is always going to be the screen width by 0 since it's on the 0th row. And this corner is always going to be the screen width by the screen height. So using this information, we know that if we want to move left, we need to move to the negative side because this is 0 and this is the screen width, which will always be a positive value. In order to move up, we need to also move to a negative value, since this is always going to be 0, and this is always going to be the screen height. So if we go to this function again, in order to move left, we can give it a negative value on the x-axis. So negative 0.1f. The reason that I do 0.1f and not 0.1 is because the character will move around really quickly right now. You will see it in a second. And for the y-axis, we don't want to move, so we just specify the 0.0f. So now if we copy this a few times and simply modify the keys to D, W, and S, and then simply modify the values. So D will move to 0 0.1 in the x-axis, W will move is 0, 0.0 in the x-axis, and negative 0 0.1 in the y-axis, and S will simply move as 1 in the y-axis and 0 in the x-axis. So now if we run a program again, and we press on either W, A, S, or D, you will see that our character will move around. But you can also see that something weird is happening. Like we're dragging the cube around, like we're not actually clearing the screen. And that's exactly the case. We're never clearing the screen. That's something that you have to do manually. Since right now, what we're constantly doing is we're drawing to the buffers. But we're never saying, hey, this buffer needs to be cleared. So could you please clear the buffer for me? We're never doing that. We're always just kind of keep on drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. So eventually we're going to have this weird shape because we're only going to keep drawing. We're never going to clear the screen. In order to clear the screen, we need to call, before we draw anything, window that clear and that's it and inside of clear we can give it a color so whatever color we want our background to be after we've cleared it we're not going to specify any color in there right now so it's simply just going to be a black background which is the default color so now if we run the program again you will see that if we now move our player around using WAS and D it will actually show the cube and not drag it around and that's basically all I have to say in this tutorial in the next episode I'm going to explain to you how we can actually move this cube around using the mouse so that the cube will go to our mouse position. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.